Friendship is Magic is in the books, and now everyone's sad. Unless you've already moved on from the show, in which case more power to you. Now, I do plan on doing more videos on the show, especially since now my videos can't be debunked by canon anymore, but I've had this idea for something new for a little while now. I've been watching a lot of video game challenge videos, and if you haven't seen what I'm talking about, check out VG Myths. They do some really wild stuff. Basically, they try to beat various video games under crazy circumstances, like not being able to jump in Mario or eat anything in Kirby. I want to try my hand at this kind of thing, and I'm doing so with my favorite series of games, Pokemon. Guys like John Stone and Madrabred have given me plenty of inspiration here, but I want to try something that I don't think has been done on YouTube. This is something I like to call the Roaming Gym Leader Challenge. Why that name? Well, for this challenge, you are a gym leader. And that means you are required by law to only use one type of Pokemon in battle, meaning Blue from Gen 2 is a wanted criminal. This has been in my mind for a long time, even before I knew that videos like these existed, and I'm really excited to share my findings with you. Today, we're going to find out if you can beat Pokemon Red using only Grass-type Pokemon. The answer is yes, I mean come on, there, there are videos of people beating various Pokemon games with every single crappy Pokemon imaginable. Magikarp, Rattata, Ditto, Weedle, you name it, it's probably already happened. And we'll have multiple fully evolved Pokemon here, so it'll happen at some point. But I want to see how easily I can do this, meaning I'll have to beat the champion at as low a level as possible. Here's a quick breakdown of the rules. Number one, I can only use grass type Pokemon in battle. Number two, I can only use grass type Pokemon as HM users unless no grass type Pokemon learn a particular HM. For example, none of them learn Surf, so I'll have to get something else for that. Number three, no items in battle, although I can use them outside of battle. And number four, no glitches or exploits, which should be fine since I don't know any. This video will be graded at the end based on the highest level Pokemon I have on my roster. If I have no Pokemon above level 45 when I beat the champion, which I have never done, even on a team with type diversity, that'll be an S rank. If none are above level 50, that's an A, 55 is a B, 60 is a C, 65 is a D, and if any Pokemon have to be bumped up to level 70, that's an F. I can still complete the challenge with an F, but we'll need to stay after class. Now, Grass-type Pokemon are going to be an interesting challenge for us for a number of reasons. Grass is a type that's historically had pretty lousy type coverage. Think about the kinds of moves most Grass-type Pokemon can learn. Grass, obviously. Sometimes Poison, sometimes Bug, both of which are pretty lousy attacking types. And Normal. That won't give us a lot of options, so we'll need to play smart. Now then, let's see which Pokemon we'll have to choose from. The fully evolved Grass-type Pokemon of Generation 1 are Venusaur, Vileplume, Parasect, Victory Bell, Exeggutor, Tangela, and that's it. Oh no! We aren't going to have any choices here. These are the six Pokemon we'll have to use for this battle, except it's not. Vileplume and Victory Bell are version exclusives, Vileplume to red and Victory Bell to blue, and without a way to do trades, Victory Bell won't be a member of our team, so we're already in pretty rough shape since we're only going to be able to use 5 Pokemon. But this will be a solid challenge for us, so without further ado, let's do this. So first off, I'm going to name my character after myself, and my rival will be named Will. Named after my friend the Willstonator, whose wife is making this short horror film called Only You. If you'd like to see the trailer of it, head over to seedandspark.com slash fun slash only you movie. Link in the description. Anyway, we begin this challenge by picking up our first Pokemon, Bulbasaur. He'll be our only Pokemon for a little while, so we'll need to get good with him. Bulbasaur and later Ivysaur and Venusaur have good all-around stats, and will be our mixed attacker. We get into a battle with our rival who picks a Charmander just to be a jerk, and we miss our first tackle. This might be a bad sign. We wear each other down and it's a race to see who KOs the other first. I get lucky with a critical late in the match and I might have a shot to win if I can just- Oh. Dang. Well, we lost the first battle, but we'll get him back soon enough. After this loss that we won't be talking about, we deliver Oak's parcel, get our Pokedex, and head off on our adventure. We can have a rematch with Will on Route 22 at any time, but we'll need to train a bit first before we're ready. 
He has a level 9 Pidgey along with his level 8 starter. So I trained Bulbasaur up to level 9 as well and go give it a shot. That Pidgey though is a huge pain in the butt. It loves using Sand Attack, which kills my accuracy, and just makes the fight a crapshoot, since I can't switch out to anyone to reset the accuracy. I am able to take out Pidgey every so often, but then Charmander just rolls up to finish the job. So, more training is required. I try again at level 10, and it's still not enough, so I get mad and train all the way up to level 13 just to be sure. I start with the Leech Seed to help regain health for the whole battle, and they hit a gust. From there, I don't worry about lowering their attack and just go for tackles. Pidgey lands two sand attacks, but I'm still able to KO them without missing. In comes Charmander, and again I lead with Leech Seed. I follow it up with Growl to lower his attack, and now he can barely hurt me. I miss a couple of times, but I'm able to wear him down with Vine Whips and Leech Seed damage to take my first win in battle. After this, I breeze through the Viridian Forest and absolutely crush Brock and the Pewter Gym. I'm fairly sure most people who've played Pokemon Red and Blue have beaten Brock using only their starter, so this isn't all that exciting, aside from Bulbasaur evolving into Ivysaur after the battle. After we take down the Shorts Enthusiasts on Route 3, we make it to Mount Moon, where we'll find our second party member, Paris. Paris and Parasect get kind of a bad rap, but they'll definitely be useful for this challenge. Parasect has 95 attack power, which will make him our designated physical attacker, but he'll also be useful for one other major reason, Spore. See, there are three sleep-inducing moves in Gen 1. Hypnosis has 60% accuracy, Sleep Powder has 75, but Spore has 100% accuracy. The only downside is that Parasect is in a tie for the lowest speed of any Gen 1 fully evolved Pokemon, so we'll be able to put Pokemon to sleep, but Parasect will take a hit first. Mount Moon itself isn't that much of a problem, it just takes a while, but we'll make it out of there eventually. We have another rival battle coming up, and after a bit of prep in the Route 4 grass, we're ready for him. To start the battle, Will leads with a Pidgeotto while I go for Paris. Pidgeotto misses the first gust, allowing me to hit the Stun Spore on them. Scratch doesn't do a ton of damage to them, but I get a couple of full paralyses, and Pidgeotto goes down with relative ease. Next is Abra, who only knows Teleport, which is basically just free EXP. Then comes Rattata, and I switch to Ivysaur. Fine Whip nearly one-shots it, but I have to take an extra tackle and a critical quick attack before it'll go down. Last up is Charmander, and I switch back to Paris to try to get him paralyzed. They lower my attack with Growl, which lets me land the Stun Spore. From there, I just keep scratching them until Paris is KO'd by an Ember, and Ivysaur is able to come in and finish the job. We now have a winning record over our rival. Then we get past the Nugget Bridge and make it to Route 24, where we'll find ourselves an Oddish. To be honest, I like Victory Bell more than I like Vileplume, because Victory Bell can learn Razor Leaf and Wrap, two moves that are thoroughly broken in Generation 1. Razor Leaf always crits, meaning it's a 110 power move, and Wrap prevents your opponent from attacking. What does Vileplume have to match up to Victory Bell? Petal Dance which has 70 power and forces you to use the move three times in a row and then you're confused. Not the best, but we can make it work. Plus, it also learns Stun Spore, Sleep Powder, and Poison Powder all by level 19, so he'll be our status inflictor for the time being. We use the trainers on Route 25 to get Oddish up to our current level, and then we head over to Cerulean Gym to take on Misty. She leads with Staryu and I go with Oddish. Staryu tackles me, but an Absorb takes enough of their health to bring me back to full strength. This goes on for a couple more turns before Staryu goes down. Star Me comes in, and I try the same strategy on them. It doesn't bring me back to full health, so I put it to sleep just to be safe because I know Star Me knows recover. From there, I just keep absorbing it, and Oddish solos the second gym. For our efforts, we get both the Cascade Badge and an evolution for Oddish into Gloom. We're gonna wait until Gloom learns Petal Dance at level 38 before we evolve it into Vileplume. From there, we go north just a bit into the house that the rockets ransacked, we beat this guy, and he'll give us the Dig TM, which we'll teach to Paris. Paris is the only one of our Pokemon that can learn Dig, and it'll be a nice physical attacking move for him. Also, and I don't know if many people remember this, but back in Gen 1, Dig had 100 base power instead of 60 in other Gens, so that will be hugely powerful for us. Route 6 gives us a little bit of trouble, particularly this guy with the Butterfree who walls every move I have except normal type moves, but we eventually get to Vermilion City and we head to the SSN. This is a solid place to train up as the basement and upper deck have a bunch of sailors and fishermen that can build up your Pokemon with, and it was during that time that we got Paris to evolve into Parasect. 
After we get done grinding, we have our fourth rival fight already, and it's at this point where I realize why the later gens have multiple rivals. He starts with Pidgeotto again, and I lead with Ivysaur this time. I get to tackling, and just like before, Pidgeotto is spamming Sand Attack. I get off two tackles before I start missing, and decide to switch out to Gloom to reset my accuracy. They miss the next Sand Attack, and I'm able to get the Poison Powder off. They stop using Sand Attack at that point, and now just try to inflict damage with Quick Attack and Gust. Absorb isn't the most efficient way for taking down Pidgeotto, but it eventually works. Next is Raticate, and I stick with Gloom to get a Stun Spore. I take some harsh damage from Hyper Fang, but the Paralysis works, and I'm able to absorb it until Raticate goes down. Next up is Kadabra, and I switch to Parasect. Kadabra outspeeds me, but my higher level means that I can tank their confusion and go for the super effective Leech Life, which is enough to one-shot it and take down Kadabra. Finally, we have his middle evolution starter, Charmeleon. I take a chance and leave Parasect out there in the hopes that I can hit Dig on them. Parasect manages to take their Ember, and it's about here that I realize I might be a little overpowered for this point in the game. Dig knocks it out in one hit and the fight is over. Also, how did we dig? We are on a boat. We head upstairs into the pilot house and get the cut HM. I teach it to Gloom just so that they'll have a different attacking type in case I get into a predicament. Once I leave the SSN, I figure I might as well take on the Vermilion Gym since I'm at a pretty high level and there's no use in waiting. I mess around with his garbage cans for a bit and eventually unlock the door that leads to Lieutenant Surge. Surge leads off with Voltorb and I go with Ivysaur. Voltorb strikes first with Sonic Boom which does exactly 20 damage. I get a lucky critical on a tackle and that takes them down to about half health. I get Sonic Boomed again and I can only take one more of these. Finally takes them to the red but doesn't KO it. Luckily, Sonic Boom misses, and I can finish them off with a tackle. Next is Pikachu, and I leave Ivysaur in there. Ivysaur does a good chunk of damage with Vine Whip, and Pikachu goes for Growl. I'm not using physical moves, so it's a non-issue, and I take it down with another Vine Whip. Finally, he brings out his Raichu, and I switch to Parasect. Raichu leads with a Thundershock, but it's ineffective on me. I go for the Dig, and it's an OHKO. And that's the match. Next it's on to Route 9 and the Rock Tunnel. I decide to skip a lot of the trainers in this area since I'm already a bit over leveled, so I make a beeline for the Rock Tunnel. This is the only place in the game that uses the Flash HM, but we don't have 10 Pokemon in our decks yet, so we'll have to walk around in the dark. It's not that hard for me to make my way through the tunnel, but I have a hard time avoiding trainers, even with a map. Most of their Pokemon are of the rock type variety though, so it's not that hard to get through there. After I bump my way out of the rock tunnel, I reach Lavender Town and decide to skip the Pokemon Tower stuff. I can't get to the top anyway without a Sylph Scope, so I might as well just go ahead and head to Celadon City. After healing up, my next stop is the Celadon Game Corner to take down the rockets there and grab the Sylph Scope. I've got a good level advantage on everyone here, so I don't go out of my way to fight anyone, and instead just make my way through the tile puzzles and head to Giovanni as quickly as I can. Giovanni is a cakewalk when your team is full of grass types. He leads with Onyx, and I choose Ivysaur. One Vine Whip, and they're done. Rhyhorn comes in, and it's the same deal. Last is Kangaskhan, and I leave Ivysaur in there. I give Body Slam a try, but it doesn't do a whole lot. I keep trying Body Slam to chip away at its health. They do hit a single Comet Punch, but they keep missing the others. By the time Giovanni thinks to try a different move, it's too late, and Kangaskhan goes down. After that, I unlock Saffron City, and finally remember that the bike is a thing I can get, so I take care of that real quick. Now it's time to take on Will again, and while it may look like I have a huge level advantage on him, remember, he does have two more Pokemon than me, so let's call that a draw. He of course leads with his Pidgeotto while I start with Ivysaur. We trade normal type blows until Pidgeotto goes down to a second body slam. Next is the first of two new Pokemon for him. Depending on what his starter is, it'll be some combination of Execute, Growlithe, or Gyarados. Since he chose Charmander, we'll get Execute and Gyarados. Execute comes out and I swap to Parasect. Execute is quad weak to leech life, and even with my level advantage, it's still not a one-hit kill. Luckily, Execute uses Barrage, which is trash, and I finish it with a scratch. Following them is Gyarados, and I switch back to Ivysaur. I give Razor Leaf a try since it only does neutral damage to them, and they drop to under half health. Gyarados takes a bite out of me and I drop down to half, but luckily another Razor Leaf can knock it out. Next is Kadabra and it's back to Parasect. I easily tank their confusion and go for a dig to target Kadabra's trash physical defense. It hits and overkills Kadabra. Finally is Charmeleon, and I keep Parasect out there to try and get another dig, just like the last battle with Will. Parasect survives the Ember again, but it's a little close for comfort. I land the dig, and that's another win over Will. And as a nice bonus, we finally learn Spore for Parasect. 
Hooray! The ghosts of Pokemon Tower give me all kinds of grief since they're immune to normal attacks and their poison subtypes resist grass attacks, so Parasect will have to win the day for us as we climb the tower. Anyway, we beat the rockets there too and get the Poke Flute from Mr. Fuji. We then head back to Celadon to grab a couple of important things, namely the Fly HM and someone to use it. Now unfortunately this means I'll have to catch a non-grass type to be an HM user since no grass types learn fly in this generation. Luckily, there's a patch of grass right next to the lady who gives me the HM with Spearow in it. So we snag one real fast, pick up the HM, and we'll be on our way. We head down the cycling road and head to Fuchsia City and the Safari Zone. There we'll find our next party member, Execute. Execute and Exeggutor are special tanks. Exeggutor has a staggering 125 base special, fourth highest in the game, and in Gen 1, that's special attack and special defense. Couple that with a psychic typing that was just shredding Pokemon in this generation, and we're looking at one of the most powerful Pokemon we'll have in this journey. After that, we pick up all of the important items from the area, including the Egg Bomb TM for Execute, the Surf HM, which we'll have to find another non-grass Pokemon for, UGG, and the Gold Teeth, which will be swapped for the Strength HM. After we leave, we immediately evolve Execute into Exeggutor with a Leaf Stone, and then teach them all the moves they need to complete their arsenal through TMs, with Psychic, Egg Bomb, and Strength. With Exeggutor in our party, we should have absolutely no problem with Erika now. Even with being poisoned and a limited number of Psychics since I forgot to heal from fighting her underlings, I take down her Victory Bell without much issue. Next is Tangela and I switch to Parasect. Leech Life does less damage than I was expecting, but Tangela isn't doing much damage to me with Constrict, so that part is rather painless as well. Her Vileplume comes in, so it's back to Exeggutor. Vileplume is about as easy to KO as Victory Bell was, and I take down Erika without much resistance. She gives me the Mega Drain TM, and I can finally use one of these TMs the gym leaders give me. I teach it to Gloom as an upgrade to Absorb. After I finish up in Celadon, I fly back to Fuchsia to try to take on their gym, but as it turns out, the second half of the gym leaders are at a way higher level than what we've been seeing. Erika's strongest Pokemon is level 29. Koga and Sabrina's are both level 43. I think we've reached the hard part of the game. After I fight my way through Koga's underlings, we reach the Ninja Master himself. He starts with a coughing, and that's a pretty easy way to start. Executes Psychic, gets a crit, and coughing is down. Next is Muck, and I stay with Exeggutor. Koga starts by giving an X attack to Muck, and Psychic isn't enough to take them out. This leaves me worried about a counter attack on the next turn, but Koga uses another X attack, and I take out Muck with the next Psychic. Koga, what the heck was that? Koga sends out his second coughing, and somehow I get a critical again with Psychic. I guess we'll never find out whether or not it was needed. Finally, we get Koga's ace, his wheezing. I keep Exeggutor out because, well, they worked well so far. I go for Psychic again, but wheezing goes first with Sludge, which puts Exeggutor directly into the red and poisons them. Exeggutor lands the Psychic and gets a third critical hit, which this time I'm sure was needed for that KO. And with that, Koga is down. Maybe this isn't quite the hard part yet. Now that I beat Koga, I can use Surf outside of battle, so I grab the nearby Good Rod and go fishing for a Surfer. I find a Goldeen pretty quickly and catch them. Then I fly off to Pallet Town and head south to Route 21. There's a tiny patch of grass that's only accessible once you can Surf, and that patch of grass is the only place in the game where you can find Tangela. Tangela, unfortunately, isn't going to be all that useful. It's a solid enough Pokemon with a weirdly good 115 base defense at a solid 100 base special, but its move pool is pretty weak until late game without some extra help from TMs that we don't have access to yet. We'll keep them around though and find a decent use for them. Now, I do not want to face Sabrina yet. You do not want to face a Psychic type master unprepared. So I go to Saffron City and start training up my Pokemon. First stop, Sylphco. Not only is there a ton of rockets to fight along the way, but there's also a lot of useful items here. We can find the Self-Destruct TM, which we'll give to Exeggutor as a last-ditch kamikaze move, and the Sword Stance TM, which can be learned by way more Pokemon than I thought. I taught it to Parasect to make their Leech Lives and Dig that much more powerful. After fighting my way to the top of the tower and getting my Ivysaur to evolve into Venusaur, right before we're ready to fight Giovanni again, oi, this guy. Will's back and his team has gotten a lot stronger. I heal up in this handy dandy bed a floor down and get ready for the fight. 
I lead with Tangela against his Pidgeot and try out the Skull Bash TM that I just taught to Tangela. Honestly, if I had a do-over on this run, I would have taught Tangela Takedown instead, but that's in the past now. Pidgeot was able to wreck me with Wing Attacks before I got the Skull Bash off, and it didn't do jack to them, and Pidgeot KO'd me easily. I send out Venusaur and go for the Toxic, but that's a miss. Wing Attack takes away about a third of my health, and I try Toxic again. It lands, but I take another Wing Attack. After that, I just start body slamming it with the hopes of a lucky critical hit. I get two off, with one of them actually getting that crit, and then I survive their third wing attack with just one HP, and instead of going for the killing blow, Will heals Pidgeot with a basic potion, what the heckle dude. The toxic damage almost totally negates the potion, and I take it down with a final body slam. In comes Execute, and it's over to Parasect for me. I lead with a Swords Dance, while they start with a Poison Powder. I'm poisoned, but strong. I go for the leech life immediately and take them down into the red. Execute throws up a reflect, but its health is low enough to still go down from one more leech life. Next is Gyarados and I send in Venusaur just to see what he can do with 1 HP. I go for the body slam and I get as lucky as you could possibly imagine in this situation. Critical hit and a paralyze. It still gets off a dragon rage for the KO, but Venusaur's done more than enough here. I don't want to send out Exeggutor or Parasect just yet because I'll need them for later, so out comes Gloom. I lead with an Acid to try to get a defense drop and hot dog, it works! My luck in this battle is unreal. I go for an Acid again and it just keeps using Leer to drop my defense. They finally use a Dragon Rage on me but it's too little too late and Gyarados is down. Next is Alakazam and I switch to Parasect for this. They hit a Psy Beam to take me down to just over half health. I go for Sword Stance to buff my next move. The Poison Damage and another Psy Beam takes me down to just 3 HP. The Leech Life takes him down into the red and he heals with another potion. Come on dude, this isn't funny anymore. Because of this, Alakazam goes down with another Leech Life. Last up is his Charizard and I stay with Parasect, hoping I can maybe get a Spore off. No dice. Charizard Embers Parasect into the ground. In a similar vein, I switched to Gloom to try to get a Stun Spore on Charizard. They hit Ember, but I somehow survive again with just one HP. And I get an Acid off before Charizard finishes off Gloom. Now it's down to one on one, Charizard versus Exeggutor. I go for the Psychic and it drops to about half health and I get a special drop and it's fully paralyzed. Absolutely perfect. One more Psychic, and that's the win for me. I totally shouldn't have won that match. I got a million breaks, including from my rival's own bad AI, but hey, I'll take it. After that hard-fought battle, the second Giovanni battle is a cakewalk by comparison. Unfortunately, I forgot to switch Exeggutor to the lead and have to do that on the first turn against his Nidorino. This lets Nidorino hit a Poison Sting and Poison Exeggutor on his way in. Luckily, Psychic can one-shot it and minimal damage is sustained. Next is Kangaskhan and I leave Exeggutor out there. After a botched Tail Whip, Psychic drops Kangaskhan to the quarter health. And after a successful Tail Whip, Kangaskhan falls to another Psychic. Next comes Rhyhorn, and I switch to Tangela to get it some XP. I use two Absorbs, Giovanni offers no resistance, and Rhyhorn bites the dust. Last up is his Nidoqueen, and I switch to Parasect. Giovanni keeps using Guard Specs, which prevent stat reductions. Not sure the logic to it, but it lets me go for the Dig and take it down to half health. I go for another Dig, but they hit a Poison Sting, which Parasect is quad weak to. Thankfully, I tank it really well and go for the dig again. One more round of Poison Sting, followed by a dig. This time with an added poisoning for me, ends the match in victory for me. I go to claim the Master Ball, which will all be for naught, since I've already caught all the Pokemon I'll be using for this challenge. I guess I just did this to be a nice person or something. Anyway, I'm still not at a high enough level for my liking, so I fly to Pallet and surf down to Cinnabar Island and the Pokemon Mansion to grab the Solar Beam TM. This way, Tangela can have a hard-hitting move of his own. This was a terrible idea, as the place is overrun by fire types who want my blood. I leave and try again, this time loaded up with max repels, but all this does is get rid of the weak Pokemon, meaning all that's standing between me and the TM is an army of Weezing and Rapidash. That makes things so much better! My best bet here is to just lead with Parasect and use Dig on everything, raising up its level and in the process making my repels more effective. 
After a long struggle through the mansion, I finally get the solar beam TM and the key to Blaine's gym because it's right there and I don't want to make a second trip, thank you. After one last batch of grinding in the fighting dojo, I'm finally ready to fight Sabrina. Oh, and if you're wondering which Pokemon I received from the Dojo Master, well, neither. So I head over to Sabrina's gym and scrap with her underlings. They're a bit difficult, but it's not enough to deter me into more grinding. I'm pretty sure I'm ready for Sabrina. She leads with Kadabra while I go with Tangela. Kadabra starts with Recover. I guess she expected my Tangela, who has a 60 base speed, to get the first hit on her Kadabra, which has a base 105 speed. Man, Gen 1 had some bad AI. I go for the Skull Bash, but Kadabra gets off a Psychic while I'm charging, and then survives the Skull Bash. I then go for Bind to try to whittle it down to zero, but it doesn't last long enough, and Kadabra gets a Recover. It recovers all the way back to full health, and I go for Skull Bash again. This time, I get a crit that lands Kadabra in the red. Before I can get a Bind off to lock it into a grave, Kadabra knocks out Tangela with a Psy Beam. I swap in Exeggutor and try and Psychic it away, but no dice. It uses Disable and takes out Psychic. Okay then, maybe Strength will work. Before I can find out if it will work though, Kadabra recovers again and gets back into the green. But fortunately, Strength is enough to land me the KO. She sends in Mr. Mime and I go for Parasect. My thinking is that Mr. Mime is weak enough for me to set up with sword stances so I can keep a boosted Parasect in and really take it to the rest of the Psychics with Leech Life. The Mime gets up two barriers to my two sword stances, so we're both up by four levels for both my attack and his defense. I start the Leech Life and get some decent damage in while Mr. Mime maxes out his defense with another barrier. After that, we swap Confusions and Leech Lifes, and Mr. Mime loses that exchange. Sabrina sends in a Venomoth, and I leave Parasect in there to try for a dig. I go underground, but not before I get poisoned. Not great, considering I'm wasting a turn with the dig. But the move works, and Venomoth goes down in one hit. Finally, there's her Alakazam. I try for a leech life, but Alakazam outspeeds me and KOs Parasect, so there goes that strategy. I switch to Exeggutor, and now all Alakazam wants to do is recover. This actually makes some sense, since all of Alakazam's attacks are Psychic type, so it can't do much to me. When I catch on to this, I simply put them to sleep with Hypnosis, and get back to pounding them with Strength, and that's enough to take down Alakazam and claim our 6th badge. Now we're gonna need to do more grinding since we've got Blaine coming up. Not only are his Pokemon even stronger than Sabrina's, maxing out with his level 47 Arcanine, but they're also, of course, fire types. We're not gonna last very long where we're at right now. Luckily, routes 19 through 21, as well as the Seafoam Islands, are full of water Pokemon and trainers that can build us up quite nicely. So when we come back, we'll see how much we've grown. Alright kids, we're back. I'm now level 38 or 39 on all of my Pokemon, and I've also evolved Gloom into Vileplume upon learning Petal Dance. Let's give this a shot and see how it goes. Growlithe leads for Blaine while Parasect leads for me. Growlithe starts with a Super Potion. Okay, seriously now? At least it was possible for Sabrina's Pokemon to take damage before using Recover. This is just dumb. You're dumb, Blaine. I know this and I just met you. Anyway, this lets me get the dig off and Growlithe gets OHKO'd. In comes Ponyta, and here come the Fire Spins. There isn't a lot I can do here except wait for a Fire Spin to miss, or another Super Potion use. Guess which one happens first? Same thing as last time, I get the Dig off, and get the One Shot. I'm almost tempted to reset, but I don't think that would change their intelligence. Next up is Rapidash, and it's at this point that I think Parasect might be up a creek. Rapidash lands a Fire Spin, and that's all she wrote for Parasect. I go for Exeggutor, but Rapidash still outspeeds me and gets off more Fire Spins. Rapidash gives me a free shot to hit with a Psychic after another Super Potion use, and now I just think he's being condescending, so now it's on. He finally uses a Super Potion in a scenario that makes sense and nearly fills his health back to full, and does it during a Fire Spin, which doesn't seem to have any penalty, that's weird. I try to get something going, but Fire Spin just keeps connecting and Exeggutor is out. I send in Tangela to try and get a Stun Spore, and finally something involving this battle goes my way. That doesn't involve Super Potion uses. Fire Spin misses and Stun Spore connects. I go for Skull Bash, and I charge up for it, and Rapidash Fire Spins me. But that's okay, because I just have to wait for a full paralysis, and BAM! The move connects. It only does about half damage with a crit, so that's maybe not gonna work. I go for a bind to bring it down just a bit for a second Skull Bash, and it works for three turns. 
I go for another Skull Bash and wait for the full Paralyze again, it connects again, and Rapidash survives with just a sliver of health. I hit a quick bind, and that's enough for the knockout. Blaine's down to his last Pokemon, his Arcanine. I leave Tangela in to try for the Stun Spore, and I get it off, meaning Tangela has done his part. I go for a bind just for a bit of extra damage, and Blaine uses another Super Potion, which he has to be out of by now. So Bind connects, and takes a tiny bit of damage away before Arcanine puts me down. I go to Vileplume to try to get a little more damage in before my heavy hitter goes in last. I go for Petal Dance and get a trifecta of full paralyzes before I hit myself in confusion and Arcanine hits me with a giant wall of fire. Vileplume did good, but it's time for the final battle. Venusaur versus Arcanine. I try a Body Slam and it doesn't do much, but it does drop Arcanine into the red. Arcanine hits an Ember that puts me deep into the yellow with a crit. I'm worried about whether to do another Body Slam or a Razor Leaf, and which one will be enough for the KO. I pick Body Slam, and it's enough for the knockout, and the hard-fought win. But there's no rest for us, we head immediately to Viridian to challenge Giovanni and claim our final badge. We aren't at a major type disadvantage this time, so I'm not too worried about grinding beforehand. I just fight the underlings, and then I walk up to Giovanni and slap him in the mouth. He leads off with his Rhyhorn, and I go with Vileplume. I get the jump on him with a pedal dance, which is more than enough for the one-hit kill with the crit. Next comes Dugtrio, but Vileplume's out of control and takes out Dugtrio without any input needed from me. With Nidoqueen coming next, I swap out to Parasect. I get bopped by a critical poison sting and still survive well enough to land Dig for over half damage. Nidoqueen hits another poison sting without a crit this time, and I survive with just 7 HP left. Just enough to dig down and take down Nidoqueen. Nido King is next, and Parasect is a dead shroom walking right now, so it's a switch to Exeggutor. I hit a Psychic, and they drop to a single pixel of health, and after I tank a Poison Sting, I finish them off with another Psychic. He switches to his last Pokemon, Rhydon, and I switch Tangela in just so they get the experience points for knocking him out. One Solar Beam KOs Rhydon, and that's the 8th badge obtained. I then go west to Route 22 where we can fight Will again, but I am just not ready for it. I tried facing him 5 times, and if I even made it to his Charizard, that is where I would get stonewalled. So it's back on the road for more training. I still haven't faced the people on routes 13 through 15, nor have I taken down the cycling road trainers. So that's where I'll go bulk up. Be back soon. I'm back again with all of my Pokemon at level 43. Let's try this again. Venusaur leads for me against his Pidgeot and I just start body slamming and hoping for a crit. They kept going for wing attack until the turn right before they went down where they used an agility, which is a bit odd, but a bit defensible, I guess? Anyway, Pidgeot goes down. Next is his newest addition, a Rhyhorn, which we've just got done destroying a bunch of. One petal dance from Vileplume KOs them right away. I switch to Parasect in preparation for his inexplicably unevolved Execute. I guess he was just really hoping they could learn Sleep Powder? Oh well, Leech Life knocks them down to a third health, they miss the Poison Powder, and I finish it off while taking no damage to Parasect. We're in good shape. Next is Gyarados and I swap to Tangela. Gyarados gets a quick critical bite on me, but I get the Stun Spore to connect on them. I bring them down just a bit with Bind, and then charge up a Solar Beam, which drops them to under half. I get another full Paralyze, so I bind them up again, and charge up for one more Solar Beam. I'm able to tank a Dragon Rage, and Gyarados is down. Next is Alakazam and it's back to Parasect. They lead with Recover again, which just lets me go down for the dig. They wisely put up a Reflect, and it only takes maybe a third of their health, and he just recovers right away. I change up my strategy and try some Sword Stances. I take a Psy Beam, but then get a Spore on him to put him to sleep for a bit. Now I can boost in peace, and I max out my attack. Then I go Leech Life to restore my health, and two of them are enough to knock out Alakazam. I've made it to his Charizard without losing any of my guys yet, but a few of them are in dire straits, so this isn't a confirmed win just yet. Last is that pesky Charizard, and I swap to Vileplume. I eat a flamethrower, but survive just long enough to get off a Stun Spore. Now at the speed advantage, I just go for Acid, trying to get a defense drop. I don't get it, but Vileplume's done his job well. I swap to Exeggutor, and just hit him with my hardest attack. Thanks to a full Paralyze, I get off two Psychics before he torches me with Flamethrower. I make it out though, and one more Psychic ends the match. I breathe a sigh of relief, and head towards Victory Road. Not much happens here, I avoid most of the trainers for now because I'm getting close to that level 45 threshold for an S rank. This is what my team looks like heading into the Elite Four, and I'm just gonna give them a shot. If it works, great. If not, no big deal. Maybe there's some chance in hell that maybe... Nope, nope, no chance. Lorelei mopped the floor with me.
Admittedly, she's probably the hardest trainer out of the Elite Four with her ice types, but if I can't beat her, I'll have no chance against the champion who has a 5 to 10 level lead on all of her Pokemon and type diversity. So with the hopes of an S rank out the window, let's grind up on the victory road. Alright, I think we're ready now. All of my Pokemon are at level 48, so let's give this another try. To save time if I can't get past, say, Lance, I'll train more and pick back up after Lance just to save your time and mine. Let's fight Lorelei. She starts with Dugong and I go Vileplume. Lorelei immediately tries to take a nap, which isn't wise, and I get off a Petal Dance. It's not enough for the KO, but Lorelei heals Dugong with a rest, and I keep up the dance, and that's a KO. Next up is Cloyster, and since Vileplume is about to be confused, I swap to Venusaur. And fortunately, one Razor Leaf is enough for the win right away. This is going way better than my last attempt, and I keep Venusaur for the Razor Leaf. One is enough to bring it down to the red, but they use Amnesia instead of attacking, and Slowbro is done with one more Razor Leaf. Next is the tricky one, Jinx. Her Ice Punch was a death sentence in my earlier runs, so I need to make sure I can take it down quick. I swap to Tangela and go for a Stun Spore. Jinx gets off that punch and drops me to a third health, but the Stun Spore connects. I use Bind just to get some free damage in, and then I try charging up a Solar Beam, but another Ice Punch takes me down. I try Parasect and do a quick bulk up with Sword Stance. I survive the Ice Punch and go for Leech Life, which almost KOs them from nearly full health. Jinx heals up with a Super Potion, and I use one more Leech Life to take down Jinx. Last of Lorelei's Pokemon is Lapras, and I kept Paris in to try for a Spore, but I accidentally hit Dig. Doesn't matter though, because Lapras one-shots me with a blizzard. I need someone fast, so I take out Venusaur and go for a Razor Leaf. Lapras goes down to under half health, but retaliates with blizzard. I managed to survive, but it freezes me, so I might as well have just taken those last 11 HP. Exeggutor comes out and I take no chances. Before Lapras can do something crazy, I immediately explode, taking down both Lapras and my Exeggutor. All that's left is my Vileplume, and that's enough for the win. Next up is Bruno, who's a much easier time. He leads with an Onyx and I send out Vileplume. While Onyx is busy taking X Defense, I use Petal Dance to take them down, no sweat. Hitmonchan is next and I swap to Exeggutor. They use Thunder Punch and it does nothing. I respond with Psychic, which does everything. Next comes Hitmonlee and it's no more difficult than Chan. I tank a Jump Kick, land a Psychic, and they're toast. Next is Onyx and I send Vileplume back in for some Deja Vu. Onyx misses a slam, I land Petal Dance, down goes Onyx. Last is Machamp and I bring back Exeggutor for another round of Psychic Blasts. Surprisingly, Machamp survives the Psychic and responds with a submission that misses. One strength seals my victory. Through the next door is Agatha, the Ghost Master. Sounds scary, but almost all of her Pokemon can be felt with both Psychic or Ground type attacks. First is Gengar, so I start with Exeggutor. Gengar leads with Nightshade, which drops me by a third but my Psychic does way more to them. Gengar then puts me to sleep with Hypnosis. During this time, Agatha heals with a Super Potion, which seems smart until you realize that this Gengar has Dream Eater. Then she lands a Confused Ray just to make things more difficult for when I wake up. And then she does something I've never seen an opponent do in this run. She switches Pokemon to a Golbat. That's unique. Golbat starts pelting me with wing attacks and I look like I'm in trouble. But then she does something baffling. She uses Haze, which seems to have eliminated my confusion. Thanks, friend. Here's a Psychic for your troubles. Down goes Golbat. She sends back in Gengar, and after they miss the first Hypnosis, I down it with a Psychic. Next is Haunter, and for a change of pace, I send in Parasect. Haunter tries for a Dream Eater, but I'm not asleep yet. Silly ghost. And I head underground. When I pop back up, Haunter is no more. Next is Arbok, and after I just barely survive an acid attack, I go down for a dig and take Arbok deep into the yellow. Then Arbok paralyzes me with Glare. I try to put it to sleep so the next Pokemon can have a free kill, but it doesn't work. Arbok takes me down. Venusaur goes in, body slams the snake, and that's all for Arbok. Last up is her second Gengar. I stick with Venusaur, and that might have been a mistake, as I really can't do much to them. And yet, I'm able to hang around and get off several Razor Leafs. By the time Gengar finally takes me out with the Nightshade, Gengar only has about a quarter health left. I swap to Vileplume and land the Stun Spore. I then try the Petal Dance, and Gengar keeps missing with Toxic and Dream Eater. Agatha heals Gengar when they're in the red, and now I'm confused after the Petal Dance. I keep trying to get another one off to keep wearing it down, but it's not until the third try that it works, until Gengar finally fades, and I beat my third Elite Four member. 
The last of the Elite Four is Lance and he leads with a Gyarados. I start with Exeggutor and he immediately blasts me with Hyper Beam. However, Exeggutor tanks it with over half health and I put the big fish to sleep right away. I start using Strength, targeting Gyarados' lower physical defense, but it's a slow process. I switch to Psychic, which definitely seems to do more to them. I get them all the way to the red, but Lance heals with the Hyper Potion. This wouldn't have happened if I had just used three Psychics. But the problem is I'm running out of Psychic PP. I get three more Psychics off, and it's still not enough for the KO. Okay, never mind what I said earlier. After eating a Dragon Rage, I finish them off with Strength. Next is Dragon Air, and I go with Parasect. Parasect takes a Hyper Beam pretty well, and I put them to sleep and start Swords Dancing. Dragon Air wakes up on my second Swords Dance, and after raising its agility despite already outspeeding me, I send it back to Dreamland. I max out my attack with one more Swords Dance, and then start sucking the life away. Dragon Air falls to two Leech Lifes. He's got another Dragonair coming, so I repeat the strategy. Use Spore, and then Leech Life until the dragon goes away. Next is Aerodactyl, and after a bit of deliberation, I stick with Parasect to put it to sleep and see how Leech Life does. Answer, not well. But I keep going since Parasect probably won't be that useful against Dragonite. Um, is this Aerodactyl ever gonna wake up? Well, probably, now that he's been healed with a Hyper Potion. I get confused with Supersonic, but I'm still able to put them back to sleep. I swap to Tangela, and they wake up immediately. Great! Tangela has to eat a Hyper Beam, but he does pretty well and starts charging up a Solar Beam. When it connects, Aerodactyl barely hangs on, hits another Hyper Beam, gets a crit, and takes down Tangela. I send in Vileplume thinking he still needs to recharge, but it turns out Hyper Beam doesn't need to recharge if it gets a kill in Gen 1. So I learned that today. Vileplume takes a Hyper Beam as well, he lives, and takes them down. Last up is that dreaded Dragonite. I'll leave Vileplume in thinking I'll go for a Stun Spore, but I'm still in my Petal Dance Rage. I'm not at my best today. Still, I managed to land the Stun Spore despite the confusion. And despite the paralysis, Dragonite still outspeeds me, so that's neat. I try to land some acids to get a defense drop on the big guy. It works a couple of times, but now I'm noticing the Dragonite has just completely stopped attacking me. They just keep using agility and barrier, despite the fact that both their speed and defense have been maxed out. I keep spamming acid until I feel like I can start safely using Petal Dance without running the risk of getting confused, but Lance scuttles all those plans by using a Hyper Potion. You jerk. I switch over to Venusaur and start raising my special with Growth. Once it's maxed, I start throwing Razor Leafs at Dragonite and it doesn't do much. My options here are a Quad Resistant Razor Leaf or a Body Slam against a Max Defense Dragonite. So I just keep doing what I can until finally Dragonite goes down and this marathon is over. But there's one last obstacle to overcome. After a round of healing both HP and PP, I'm ready for the final battle. As always, Will leads with Pidgeot and I go with Parasect. I get a Spore to put them to sleep right away, and switch to Exeggutor. A trio of quick Psychics are enough to take down Pidgeot. Next is Alakazam, and it's back to Parasect. After they use a Recover at full health, I put them to sleep as well, and max out my attack. Once that happens, I use Leech Life, and one-shot Alakazam. Next is Rhydon, and I put him to sleep as well, and go for Dig. It feels like I'm in a good rhythm here, as Dig connects, and despite Rhydon's massive defense, I nearly one-shot him, and then finish off Rhydon with a Leech Life. In comes Exeggutor, and keeping Parasect in is an easy choice. This time, I take a Stomp, put them to sleep, and Leech Life my health back to full with another OHKO. Next is Gyarados, and I might as well stick with Parasect, he's on such a roll. I take a Hyper Beam and use Leech Life, which doesn't do a ton. I put them to sleep anyway, and try to bring them down. Luckily, they never wake up, and Gyarados is down. With all the success Parasect has had so far, I absolutely let him start against his final Pokemon, Charizard. But one Fire Blast sends me crashing back to Earth. I go for Exeggutor, and Charizard misses with a Fire Spin. I put Charizard to sleep with Hypnosis, and just go for Psychics until Charizard goes down. That's all, folks. We have officially beaten Pokemon Red using only Grass-type Pokemon. So in the end, this was a relatively easy first challenge, as we just managed to barely snag that A rank with Parasect leading the way at level 50. The MVP of this run surprisingly would have to be Parasect. He carried the team through so much of the late game, and it would have taken much, much longer to win without all those spores. So with that out of the way, thank you very much for watching, and let me know if you'd like to see any more of these challenges. Thank you, and I'll see y'all later.